Hey, it's Friday. How's it going today? So good to see you. Letitia, I know you're there. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Friday. It's a beautiful day here in Columbus. Oh, yeah. Hey. Ciao, Italia. That's right. Tangerine. Laguna Beach. Idaho. Hey, Tom Swisher. Great. 
Indonesia. Hey Mike. Friday. What a beautiful Friday it is, too, here in Plain City, Ohio, close to Columbus. It's kind of like a little cloudy, but sunny cloudy. You know that nice kind of day where it's uh, warmer? It's warmer, too. Wow, feels good this morning. Looks like a lot of the world is uh, getting brave and uh, going out. And uh, please be safe. Be careful. I think we learned a lot, right? We learned uh, how to be uh, very cautious about what we touch and uh, who we breathe on and who breathes on us. (laughs) So uh, just be careful. I just saw that uh, my friend Tom Swisher joined. And Tom, I got to tell you about Tom. Um, He was uh, very inspirational in the beginning of my gigging career we're talking way way back when i was still playing the cordovox it was an instrument that looked like an accordion but it sounded like a b3 and so my first gig that i got that i played with tom was was uh, uh, this guy named donnie smather god bless his soul he just died he was a good friend of ours of course all of us uh Donnie had booked this gig, I don't know, it was in a Sheraton hotel. It was a little wedding kind of gig, you know. I think I was 15 at the time, and I had been playing with, you know, another drummer, a part of the Monaco family band, and this was like a chance for me to play like a gig where it wasn't my gig, where I wasn't the boss, you know. I was a leader of my own band from the very beginning. From 12, I was taught not only to play the gig, but to 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 lead it, to talk, to show, to smile. I was telling Jack, my friend, uh, the first lessons that my father would teach me when I would go out is I had to smile no matter what. You had to show the people that you were happy. That was entertainment, right? And here I am 50 years later and I'm still trying to smile and uh, make you happy. That's beautiful because that's what I do. I was gifted to do this and I love to do it but Tom see this was the first gig I got where I had to go and play in another band now that's a big deal I know you musicians in the house you know you practice you practice and then you finally get that gig Ooh, it's nervous huh? well I remember I was so into as I still am today as you can tell so into music sound uh, and when you play with other people you get the gift of all of the energies coming together so you're hearing me play and I'm creating all of the energies other than maybe a groove that that is repeated over and over again you can call it an energy I call it a glorified metronome with a groove right it doesn't really go anywhere it doesn't say anything but just repeats an algorithm a pattern you saw me when I was with Pat Martino in Italy. A che paese? Siamo al il Toro, that round building. That's a crazy place to play. You got to carry the organ all the way up the steps. <laughs> so yeah, I, I get distracted. I have friends from everywhere. Lo Marco. <laughs> so anyhow, Tom Swisher, uh, his first gig. He had a set. He had this little symbol. I remember it was a little symbol. Thimble, I think you call it. Tom, are you still there? I hope you're there. 
you got to be there. Tom Carroll, another guy very important in my career right there, Tom Carroll. And uh, so anyhow, we played this first gig, and Tom had these little cymbals, and we were playing tunes, and it just sounded so good because Tom was so professional, and he was so kind to me. And he's one of the people that groomed me uh, to be who I am today. So, Tom, I love you. Hats off to you for all of the great work. Tom Carroll's here with me, and Tom and I are good friends. But, you know, when I was younger than, I'm younger than you, I used to sneak into the good times when you were playing with Hank Marr. And I'd watch you, Tom Carroll, and listen to you play with Hank Marr. So see how blessed I am just right here in our little broadcast today. Woo-wee. Deep. Okay, so hey, since Tom is here, let's, both Toms, Tom Carroll and Tom Swisher, we could have a band. Tom plays a great guitar. I was just looking at the video you guys shot with Hank Marr and Jim Rupp. Yeah, that's a great record. And Tom is on a track with me on uh, Fiery Blues. Me, you, and Tom, and uh, 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 Jim Rupp. We play uh, Hank's Greasy Spoon. Yeah. So there's a guitarist for Hank Marr right there. See, Tom Carroll. He's on the other group. See, we have two groups here, Tom. We got my personal friends. Then I have my other Facebook per, uh, professional page and also my YouTube people all right here at one time. I can talk to all of you, all of you. I wonder if everybody just said something real quick, how quickly these things would just like fly. I'd like to see that sometime. Okay, so I'm going to play a Latin tune. This is called My Little Boat. Tom and Tom. Tom. Thank you. 
family has a great dinner. I love you all, man. Because in Europe, it's dinner time. In Columbus, it's lunch time. In Los Angeles, it's breakfast time. Hey, Patrick's. He's calling from Europe. Hey, Rudy. I'm going to find a new way to put that cell phone in a better place. That's the next challenge. See? We're refining our production skills as we move along here in virtual land where it's almost real time now, isn't it? Feels that way. Hey, Danny. Hola. Good to see you. Paolo Gercado. Letitia, happy Friday. Hey, this is going to be a good day for me after I, I have a lesson at 2 o'clock live in New York City. New York City. And then... I'm going to drive. I'm going to get out. <laughs> I hope I don't crash. I haven't driven in a few, few weeks at least. Few, God, you know, it is Friday. So I'm going to go uh, do some errands. And maybe, is it safe enough to cut your hair? What do you think? Wear a mask? Anybody already ventured out? I mean, listen, you know, what is safe? There is no vaccination. And if you get it, you got it. So they... So I don't know really what safe is, but uh, how, how do all of you feel, I guess, would be the proper question about going getting uh, in close proximity of a stranger to cut your hair that gets in close proximity of a lot of people in the daytime. So that's the way I see it, you know. Uh, this is kind of strange illness because, like, you know, there have been other illnesses that you can contract if you do a certain thing, uh, but if you don't do that certain thing, um, you know, you're safe. But here, you know, sitting on a chair, people could have sneezed, could have had stuff on their hands. You did? Okay, well, then I'm going to do it. I'm going to go get my hair cut, get some mail. I'm supposed to do a track for my friend Dominic, and if I don't, uh, tomorrow is going to be so busy, thank God. But I could next day would be like Sunday. So Dominic Monaco, I'm going to try this afternoon. I think I'll probably end up doing it tonight. But giant steps. <laughs> We're going to do it. <laughs> you know, it's been really cool that it, since I've been doing this, it's been an honor. Hey, Steve, you're Dave's brother. Okay, great. Thank you. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, the great honor, like the Cotton Club Blue Note Japan asked me to do a, a stream once for them during the International Jazz Day. And uh, yeah, I got my magic boy over here. Yeah, mask and gloves. Yeah, I'm gonna wear like a raincoat. <laughs> yeah, can you wear a raincoat and goggles? <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> All right, just take off that. Just like cut it around, <laughs> put some duct tape, stage tape we'll call Dave Nilo. Need to get some duct tape, stage tape. And uh, see, Magic Boy, he's my, uh, he's my brother here. He loves me a lot. Don't you, Magic? Say hi to everybody. Hi. There he goes. All right. Hey, I want to sing a song. You know, we live in Ohio. And one of my first friends was, he passed away. I hope I can get through this tearlessly. But this song reminds me of Randy. Randy Massey. And uh, it's a little song that kind of would think... You would think a, a little bit of a situation. I know the setting of this original tune was not 
Ohio, but you know, we have a lot of fishing ponds. And uh, speaking of fishing ponds, uh, if you feel like it's uh, the Eagles flying on Friday, then uh, PayPal ME Monaco Productions is a great fishing hole. <laughs> so just a hint there, fishing. So you got to put the you got to put the worm on the hook. But has anybody ever fished for bluegill? They're so like hungry to eat anything. When we would run out of worms, we would just put pieces of, I'm Italian, you're going to love this. Salami. They love salami. Just take a little piece of salami, put it on a hook. You catch bluegill all day. They get garlic breath. <laughs> uh. in you in style someday you dream maker you heartbreaker wherever you're going I'm going your To drift us off to see the world There's such a lovely world to see We're after the same Bones and waiting round the bend, my huckleberry friend. Moon River, and me. Thank you. 
drifters off to see the world. There's such a lovely world to see. We're after the same long rainbows and waiting round the bend. My huckleberry friend, move and me. River. What a gorgeous song. Hey, from Japan. It's 1 a.m. in Japan. How? How's it going? Happy Friday to you, too. Thank you, man. Just great to be playing music and alive still. Taking my first big risk. What's with Verdi and Puccini? <laughs> well, they're married today. <laughs> well, you know. We just moved into the new house, so I haven't had a chance to, uh, uh, you know, hang pictures, you know. Jimmy Smith told me I had time to take pictures of the, the birds in the trees, though. That was great. So, anyhow, that plaque over there I'm really, really proud of. I want to grab it for you. It's kind of a little bit like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood over here, isn't it? Can you say... Honorable plaque. Wow. Okay, I know it might be hard to see. Uh, let me see what I can do here. <laughs> Sorry to bother you there. I've had a couple of dreams in my life uh, that uh, came true. And dreams do come true, um, but they have to be uh, energized. So there's a couple parts to the dream that I've learned that have, uh, have to happen in order for the dream to come true. And those of you who have made some of your dreams come true or figured out that little piece of that formula uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. So. It starts with an idea, right? It starts with that thing they call the dream, you know, like the dream vacation that you've. And how about those tragic situations where your whole life you've planned for that dream vacation that you never took? So the vacation or the dream has to, has to jump from the energized self of thinking of that to actually making it unfold. Sometimes we, we can be responsible for that by being a catalyst, but we're never 100% responsible because there's energies that just have to happen. And that's sometimes people will call it luck. What is the difference between the guy or the gal who shows up every day to the same job with the same skill, and one gets the promotion. Luck sometimes, right? Being in the right place at the right time, saying the right thing at the right time, uh, being lucky to be at the, in, in the lunch line where the boss is, making a good impression when you didn't even know you were making a good impression, when you were doing something good for somebody, and he saw it or she saw it. Those kind of little things, that's, that's what I call luck. They don't, they're not really just luck. You just don't get lucky. You put yourself in the position to be lucky, huh? So this one here, this was the first live jazz organ summit. It was a dream of mine 
for many years. And the problem to make these things happen is, yeah, money. It takes a lot of money. Because to make these summits happen, the group of people that like what I love to play are very small. We, we're powerful, as you can see. We're all kind of hanging out a lot and, uh, you know, supporting each other. But we're a small group, jazz organ. So one of my dreams was to play at the Blue Note in Japan as Tony Monaco, not playing with Harvey Mason or Pat Martino. Not that those are bad things. <laughs> no, those are phenomenal things. Uh, I guess those are the part of the actualizing of the dream because, see, I have a record, maybe if Yamamoto-san will know, it was recorded in Osaka. It's Jimmy Smith, live in Osaka, you know. I think it's called The Master. No, I, I can't remember. I got so many albums. But it's Jimmy Smith. And ever since I heard that record, I always, now this is before the internet, you know, and a flight to Italy and driving from Rome to the hometown before freeways would take forever. So imagine Japan. That was like another world. Didn't even know uh, about Japan. But here was Jimmy Smith playing uh, in, in Tokyo, in, in Osaka, live. And ever since I got that album, and you know, when I received an album or bought an album, I listened to it for days, for months. I, mean, I listened to it till you couldn't listen to it anymore, till it was so scratched you had to buy another one. One of these days I'm gonna go down and pull some of those out and show them to you. They're the history of how I learned how to play. There was no internet. So my dream was to uh, play in Japan. And uh, so this is how this all starts to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to something, and, and I'm not lost in my conversation today. I'm very found. I want you to know that. So I played many times in uh, the Cotton Club and the Blue Note in uh, uh, Nagoya and Mr. Kelly's, which is one of the stops uh, when you go there. Uh, in Osaka, where I became very good friends with many people, but in particular, Mr. Osama, uh, Osamu Yamamoto-san, and of course, all of my friends now, Midori Ono, Achimoto, Atsuko, uh, little uh, uh, Nonoka, uh, uh, Ryoko, uh, Masako, There's this other lady. She's a great organist. I can't remember her name. Well, pardon me. Gomen uh, Uh But they had a tsunami about 10 years ago. And uh, so I had saw it on the news on CNN that Japan had this tsunami. And it was really bad. And I remember the tsunami that they had previously that took out half of Indonesia. And uh, so uh, I... Innocently, these are how these dreams come true. I always wanted to go play as a headliner in Japan. And I played there many times. And, you know, you kind of just, those things are in there, but they don't come true. Well, the tsunami happened. And, you know, just out of the goodness of my heart, I reached out on an email to a couple of my friends that happened to work at the Blue Note Corporation in Japan. And... Um, Mr. Hiroshi and uh, Rene, Rene-san. I might tear up because these things are, when the dreams come true, they're powerful because they're real. They're not a dream anymore. They're real. And real is like 3D color when Dorothy of the Wizard of Oz wakes up. Whoa. So I sent an email to Rene and Hiroshi, say, how are you guys doing? I'm worried about you. Are you okay? Listen, it was probably about 2 in the afternoon in America. It means it's 3 a.m. Japan, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Within 15 minutes, and I'll find the email someday. If you'd like, I'll show it to you. Tony-san, everything's okay in Tokyo. We have a problem. What are you doing, May? 23rd, 24th, and 25th. 
all of the American musicians are afraid. I promise you, there's no radiation in Tokyo. I said, I'm coming. <laughs> what? What? I, was there any question? My dream was being unfolded, and I didn't even try. I just did the right thing. You see? Bam! Next thing you know, I'm on a plane. And I'm playing with Tommy Campbell. Hey, uh, Michael Corleone. Tommy Campbell was the first drummer I played with as Tony Monaco, the headliner of the Cotton Club in Tokyo, was with Jimmy Smith's nephew, Tommy Campbell, on the drums. Coincidences? No, no. Mm -mm. Dreams do come true. You just have to be in the right place, be ready for them, and be clean, ready. That's what I mean by that. The biggest thing that I thought that was going to come true for me with that dream was that I was going to play as Tony Monaco Trio with Tommy Campbell the first night, and then the second night, Gene Jackson. You know Gene Jackson? You know the drummer that played with Herbie Hancock? <laughs> You know, that guy. And of course, the greatest guitar player in Japan, Yosuke Onuma, who we had already been friends. So it was no coincidences. Just needed a catalyst. And all of a sudden, the Tony Monaco trio of Japan, now known as As One, because we have a manager. He wrote for me. And uh, we tour. And we were supposed to tour in June all over Japan, two and a half weeks. Gone, done. But we'll be back. So, but the biggest part of that dream that came true that wasn't even in the formula was that Rune told me that there was a, a woman that worked there that loved my music. And um, my side of the story <laughs> is that Rune said that it was, that she asked if it was okay if she could participate in a show, watch a show, and uh, you know, because they're very respectful in Japan. That's what I remember Rene asking me. I think he, I think there was Cupid in the room. I think uh, the the energies were just too hot. And uh, so after the show, I met this beautiful young lady named Asako, and uh, she gave me her business card. I still have her business card, and a little letter that said she loved America. And uh, we couldn't speak together. We only could know that we loved music. And today, Asako is my wife. And my little son, Haruki-san, is the result of that dream that came true when I reached out innocently to my friends and said, hey, are you guys okay? So, man, if you feel it in your heart to do something good for somebody, do it. Don't wait. Because that could be the moment the dreams actualize. Just like that. So, forward. You know, another dream was to get all the greatest organ players together in a place where we can all play and teach and learn. So, fortunately, to some friends of mine, Brian and Rob, at this college called Hope College, my next part of the dream started to actualize where I started to make him and Oregon an official degree. And my student, Cliff Metcalf, was going to be the first graduate in the world to graduate with a Hammond Oregon degree. And uh, the folks at uh, Hope College uh, destroyed all those dreams. And uh, they fired Brian. They fired Rob. They made him quit, basically. So I don't have anything to hide to say. It. I just say the truth. Because, see, you can see what I'm about. I'm as transparent as you can be. But before you got a chance to fire him, another dream came true. And it was the first Oregon Summit where Harvey Mason and the late great Chuck Loeb, we played a concert. And that, that year we invited Jim Alfredson to be our guest to perform a clinic and a concert. And Gerard Gibbs came 
and he was so aggressive and played so well and showed us that he was so hungry to be the next king the next year Gerard Gibbs was the clinician while Dr. Lonnie Smith played the concert so this plaque was earned again and I, I know I got a little energy here because I'm a little angry about what Hope College did to their music program, their jazz program. They basically obliterated it. They just basically pulverized it. I don't know why. But here, you can't take that away. No way. So once Corona's over, I'm going to be seeking some of you to help me make this dream continue to come true so that people like the guests that you see that I bring on to the show can have a place to show the world how great they are. And so the Oregon Summit is temporarily suspended, but as uh, soon as we can do it, I have a place. I'm just going to need some of you to help me. So sorry I got a little bit on a soapbox, but you know, I don't like uh, crooked things. Just who does, I guess, right? All right. So anyhow, I'm going to play some music, and thanks for listening to my story. God bless you all. But that plaque means the most to me. It's got all the signatures of everybody who attended, even our moderator of the Tony Monaco students and friends, John Sturk. He's there. Uh, Peter Danza, they're all there. If you look real close, all my friends and all the guests, they were there. The only one that's not around is Chuck. So we're gonna have to get Cliff back over here. You guys heard Cliff? Yeah. Hey, hi, thank you. There's a lot of stories in there, isn't there? Well, my life is full of them. I got a lot of wonderful stories to tell you. Hey, let's get funky on this Friday. Since it's fishing, <laughs> let's play a little fish. Full of construction workers. Just right outside my door. <laughs> empty cup of coffee. <laughs> That's to get me producing. Let's 
make her cry a little bit.
doing? Show me your hands. You know. <laughs> oh, I got to do this. I got to. Just to have some fun. You know, I teach music lessons. You know. This is what Jimmy Smith would say. You want to learn how to do that show? You got to. You got to go to my website over here. Huh? Put your hand over here. $30, man. I'll show you how to do it. (laughs) You know, I love you all. Hey, I got to do my sales pitch. I got to do my my spiel. (laughs) My my spiel. I had to do my my spiels. I'm feeling pretty happy. It's Friday. I'm going to... Go outside. <laughs> yeah. Going to go get some fresh air. Remember that stuff? Jump on the blitz. go. See, I don't get upset about little things like that. No. Can't get upset about that. As long as the one keeps going, you're safe. It's when you lose one that you're really lost. (laughs) I mean, when you lose one, that's more scary than losing your mommy and daddy. (laughs) I'm telling you. Uh, Okay, so I am going to take this out for uh, this wonderful hot sizzling Friday. Thank you for allowing me to be me every day. You've probably seen a few different moods. I am a human being. Uh I do uh, try to uh, pray every day. I do get down on my knees and pray. Uh, I feel that that energizes me to do this show and many other things. I don't make it long, and I don't ask for a whole lot. I just ask to do the right thing. That's it. That's all I ask. So to do the right thing on this show, I'm going to take it out with Jumpin' the Blues because I kind of wanted to play that anyhow. So God took care of me right there by making a request. (laughs) Well, the real Don Corleone... That's all I ask. Will the real Don Corleone stand up? <laughs> okay. You know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and Letitia, I can't wait. Hey, I'm going to be heading now. God only knows. Wouldn't it be great to just like see people? <laughs> be crazy. I guess they're going to open up things again here. I don't know. Um, uh, you have one? Okay, good. I'm going to get a hold of you, Letitia, if you've got somebody, because I don't want to just go to Saturdays or anybody. I need to go. See? I get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah. I need somebody to love on. Okay. For uh, Bill W. No, not Bill W. That's the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. Step one. (laughs) 
You got to admit you're powerless. That's all. That's the beginning of a new life. All right, jump into blues. Let's do it. Let me find the right groove. Do you want me to, like, play it beyond my ability? Nah. Let's try. Oh. Man, am I nuts? They say this is 293. That actually didn't feel that fast. I got anything faster? <laughs> Give it to me. Oh, jeez. Okay, this is how you play 300 beats per minute. Ready? One, two, three, four. just happened ah you guys gotta not do the ute my they're tuning in for the what do you call that ah thing you have to do at 300 beats per minute is just relax. Just take a minute. Ooh, get serious. And then you got to get a little attitude. So you relax with an attitude. No, that was uh, my family doing Bluetooth. Thank you. 
for being so kind. Yeah! Yeah! Everybody say yeah!